A long ball homeless shelter is getting ready to break ground. A vintage car owner shares their thoughts on the electric vehicle craze. We take a look at a Christmas tree farm. Finally, an update on COC's men's basketball. This is Canyon's News. With news from across the Santa Clarita Valley, this is Canyon's News. Thank you for joining us. My name is Matthew Mijo and welcome to this edition of Canyon's News. Bridge to Home is hoping to break ground by early 22 and Megan McClister has more on the story. I'm Megan McClister for Canyon's News. Bridge to Home announced they have raised more than $2 million so far for the permanent homeless shelter in Santa Clarita, getting close to the goal of $2.5 million. Bridge to Home launched Building the Bridge Capital campaign in 2021 to raise money from the community. The campaign has received donations from local churches, civic organizations, community leaders, residents in business, and the entire board of directors. Santa Clarita resident Susie M. shares her support for the future permanent homeless shelter. Our society is lacking compassion, and this would be an excellent opportunity to exercise compassion and a chance to assist, and it would also give our children and our future generations an example of um, giving back and helping these homeless individuals become um, able to support themselves and able to lead a viable, productive, healthy life. And the future contributing members of society themselves. The 19,000 square foot lot located on Drayton Street will eventually be able to accommodate up to 92 people and up to 32 of those people will be in eight single family apartment style units. Bridge to Home hopes to raise the remaining $500,000 by early 2022 and will expect construction to start in January. For Canyons News, I'm Megan McClister. The future is sooner than you think. Electric vehicles are the crazy in California and now I was able to ask a local car owner what the future of vintage vehicles looks like. As the future becomes the present, technology seems to only improve. An old computer is constantly replaced with a new model. The same could be said about transportation and the slow march towards EVs, electric vehicles. While everyone would want a new electric vehicle for Christmas, vintage car hobbyists like Santa Clarita resident Larry Dalmes share a different sentiment. Larry has owned his prideful vintage Ford pickup truck since 1986, and him and his truck go way back. I uh, took a few years off during college, and in 1986, I bought this truck behind me for $200 out of the Signal here locally. It had originally been a farmer's truck uh, on a field in Sierra Highway. A uh, teacher bought it, had it for about a year, and then uh, I bought it from him. With the electric vehicle mandate soon to arrive by the 2030s, some hobbyists would find themselves in a worrisome spot. However, Larry sees things differently. From an enthusiast standpoint, I think it's uh, kind of pretty interesting the, where they're going with it. I've seen some programs where they take uh, wreck Tesla motors and they retrofit them in trucks like the one behind me. Whether we like it or not, that's the future. While it's quite expensive, vintage car enthusiasts have a chance to turn their cars like Larry's Ford, into electric vehicle. That large price tag is sure to change as new technologies become readily available. I would, uh, if I could afford it, yeah, I probably would. Um, it, it, will make, it would make the older vehicles uh, very modern at that point. The one behind me is the original. It has a straight six motor in it, and um, they constantly need work and upgrade. It is what it is, it's an old farm truck, and that's the way I liked it. I had one like it in high school, and when I originally bought it, that's what I was thinking of, uh, you know, getting something like the one I had. For Canyons News, I'm Matthew Miha. Bennett's Best Christmas Trees has been here locally for over 30 years. Alyssa Lomley shares the story of this local tree farm's success. With Christmas right around the corner, everyone is excited to get a tree. Here at COC at the Valencia campus, you can get your Christmas tree at the Bennett's Best. Here in the parking lot, it's located right next to the football field in lot 8. Okay, these are going to be nobles. I'm sorry, no. I'm correct myself. So these are all nobles, and uh, we just sold our last few uh, Normans a few days ago. But all these are nobles, and we have some silver tips or like big ones that you that would see like more in the wild, I guess. But we're out of those right now. 
The owner, Bennett, has been doing his tree business for about 30 to 40 years, and there are four other locations. Um, he started doing, um, you know, the tree sales and working the tree lot, um, but then uh, worked into owning his own business. I think he's not always been in this location. There's, He's got four other locations in this one. With only being open for a week, the business has been busy. They're open every day and close at 9. Uh, we open the week before Thanksgiving, so that Monday before. Yeah, so we'll get really, really busy, and then we'll be here until we sell out of trees. Not only are they selling trees, but they have more to offer, like reefs and handmade wood decorations like reindeers and snowmen. The employees are helpful with picking the right tree for you. If you have any questions about the trees, they definitely have the answers. Trees last for around, like, a month and a half to, like, around, like, month and 15 days, I would say. They're very good trees. We just got them shipped in. With all the trees being chopped down and sold, they are still trying to protect the environment by planting more trees. I think that, you know, environmental wise, they do, they do, you know, produce more oxygen into the air. And for every tree that the farmers cut, they plant three more. For Canyons News, I'm Alyssa Lomelli. CUC men's basketball played against San Diego Mesa Friday night. We go to Daniel Rios for more details. Thanks, Matthew. COC men's basketball went against San Diego Mesa Friday night. The Cougars bounced back quite nicely after a loss Tuesday night against Long Beach, with a 71-63 victory, putting them at 6-2 overall for the season. Drew Henderson was the leading scorer for the Cougars tonight with 17 points and 8 rebounds. After a slow start from both teams, Zion Katzen misses the jumper for the Cougars, which leads to a fast break opportunity for San Diego. Jaden Pate passes to William Bailey, who lays it in for two, putting up San Diego 16-14 with seven minutes to go in the first half. Shortly after, the Olympians get their three-point shots falling. Joseph Rojas and Pate both make three-pointers, giving San Diego a 22-16 lead with six minutes left in the first half. Later in the half, Dylan Griffin gets the layup and a foul. He converts the free throw attempt after cutting the lead to 21-17 with a minute to go in the first. The Cougars would go in the halftime only down 27-24 after a run late in the half. After getting two early fouls in the first half, Drew Henderson would hit a three-point shot early in the second half. After another missed shot from the Cougars, the Olympians got another fast break. Sean Smith showed off his athleticism with the dunk, giving San Diego a lead of 42-40 with 13 minutes to go into the game. After a timeout from San Diego, the Cougars turned the ball over again, giving Smith an easy layup with a foul. He would make the free throw, and that gave San Diego a 44-40 lead midway through the second half. Drew Henderson was feeling it in the second half, making another three-pointer, giving COC a lead at 46-45. But with five minutes left to go in the game, Pate comes up clutch for the Olympians, hitting a three-pointer, giving them the lead again at 56-55. But ultimately, in the end, the Cougars would hit shots in the clutch with this layup by Dylan Barrientos. And what would ultimately seal the game for the Cougars was this turnaround jump shot from Portland Smith. The Cougars would go on to win the game 71-63, putting them at 6-2 overall for the season. Here is what Coach Howard Fisher and Drew Henderson had to say post-game. Well, I thought we came out with good energy tonight, uh, much different than the other night. We got off to a good start, and uh, fortunately some guys stepped up and made plays. We got in, Some players got into foul trouble. We were without uh, our starting center, and guys stepped up, made plays, and kept fighting. Um, in the first half, I feel like we were slacking a little bit, um, but second half, I, th I thought we got it together and it came out to be good and got a dub at the end. The Cougars look to extend their winning streak with their next opportunity December 9th at home against Cypress. For Canyons News, I'm Daniel Rios. That's it for this edition of Canyons News. I'm Matthew Miha. Remember, you can catch us on KansasNews.com, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.